So welcome to this latest video on 162 Matt and in this video we're going over a subtopic in coordinates of checking if a point lies on a line or curve. Now often a question may ask you if a coordinate or a point lies on a line or curve and give you its equation. Now to answer this question all you need to do is basically substitute the x ordinate into the equation and see if it gives you the y ordinate. If it does then that means that the point does lie on the line and if it doesn't then it means that the point does not lie on the line. And this obviously applies to any coordinate and any equation that represents a line or curve. Now again if you're not familiar with coordinates and the type of vocabulary the x ordinate is the number that represents the x or the distance going across from the origin and the y ordinate is the y value which represents the vertical distance from the origin. So here for example if I had a coordinate of minus 4, 5 then the x ordinate is minus 4 and the y ordinate is positive 5. So now let's have a look at some example questions. Now sometimes you may be given a graph and if it is then that's going to be a lot easier because you just simply plot the coordinate and see if that point lies on the line. However more often than not it is going to be an algebraic question and could simply be an, a multiple choice question where it's only worth one mark but it should only really take you a minute to answer the question of whether the point lies on the line. So looking at example one it says state whether any of the points lie on the line y equals 3x minus 4. Now here is our equation and what this basically means is that y equals 3 multiplied by x and we then take away 4. So looking at question A, we've got x equals 4. Now what we want to check is that x equals 4. In this coordinate we've got our x value and we've got our y value which is minus 2. So when I substitute x equals 4 into 3x minus 4 I want to see if the answer gives me minus 2. So here if I just write down the equation so you can see exactly what I'm substituting it in. So here we've got y equals and I'm substituting x equals 4 so that's going to be 3 times 4 take away 4 which is 12 take away 4 which gives me y equals 8. So as you can see, as I've got y equals 8 and the corner is minus 2, then the answer is no. Then if I move on to b, so here I'm looking at an x value of 2. So again, I'm going to substitute that into 3x minus 4. So again, I'm going to substitute that in. So I get y equals 3 times 2 take away 4. So that's y equals 6 take away 4 so y equals 2 and as you can see that is my y value so the answer then is yes. If I then move on to c now with c we're looking at negative numbers and it's always a case of just being extra careful with negative numbers so again here I'm substituting x equals minus 4 so I've got y equals 3x minus 4 so y equals 3 times minus 4 take away 4 then calculating the bracket that's going to give me minus 12 minus 4 which gives me y equals minus 16 so then as you can see I compare that to the 12 they're not the same number so the answer is no then moving on to d we're substituting x equals minus 5 so again write down the equation and here I've got y equals 3 times minus 5 take away 4 so this becomes minus 15 take away 4 so y equals minus 19 as you can see that is the same so the answer then is yes so now let's have a look at another example so this time we've got a little bit more of a complicated equation in which that we've got y equals minus 2x where our x is negative so again if you wanted to have a go at this and you get it starts to make sense then obviously all you need to do is just simply pause the video have a go at these questions and see if you get the correct answer so looking at question a we're substituting x equals 2 in which i've got y equals 10 minus 2x so again substituting the x equals 2 into this i get 10 minus 2 times 2 which then gives me y equals 10 take away 4 so y equals 6 and as you can see they're both the same so the answer then is yes. Then for b, we're substituting x equals minus 4. So again, writing down the equation. So I've got y equals 10 
minus two times minus four. So again, just be careful with the negatives. And this is where presentation really does come into factor and stopping you from making a silly mistake. So here I've got 10 minus, and then I solve the bracket in which I get minus eight, in which then I get 10 minus minus eight, two minuses make a plus, so that's gonna be 18. So as you can see, comparing that to the 16, I get 18, so the answer is no. Then for C, we're substituting x equals minus three. So here I've got y equals 10 minus two x. So y equals 10. I've got another negative number, so I'm gonna put that in brackets. I've got two times minus three. So y equals 10 minus minus six. Two minuses become a plus, so that gives me 16. Comparing that to the y ordinate, that is the same. So the answer is yes. So now moving on to example three. So here we've got an even more complicated equation because our x's and y's are on the same side, but nothing really changes. So looking at a, I've got x equals one and I'm substituting that into two x plus y equals 10. So then substituting x equals one, I get two times one plus y equals 10, in which I get two plus y equals 10. So then take the two over in which I get y equals eight. And as you can see, that's different to six. So the answer is no. Moving on to B, I'm substituting x equals two. So here we've got two x plus y. Then I'll put that in brackets, but let's just close that off there. So I've got two times two plus y. I don't know why I put a plus there, so let me just get rid of that. Should be an equals equals 10 so I've got 4 plus y equals 10 what plus 4 gives you 10 well that's 6 and as you can see that is the same so the answer here for b is yes then moving on to c we're substituting x equals minus 1 so again 2x plus y equals 10 again be careful with the negatives so it's 2 times minus 1 plus y equals 10 so here we've got minus two plus y equals 10. Take the minus two over to the other side and we get y minus 12. I don't know what's going on with that one, so let me just make that a little bit clearer. And as you can see, that is the same as the y ordinate. So the answer here is yes. Now we move on to quadratic equations. So this is when we've got a parabola. And again, I'm just gonna show you how it's exactly the same sort of method. So here we've got our equation of y equals x squared minus two. So for a, I'm substituting x equals one. So if I just write down the equation and then substitute the x in. So I've got y equals, and it's gonna be one squared minus two. One squared is one. So it gives me an answer of minus one. And as you can see, that is the same as the y ordinate. So the answer is yes. Moving on to b. We're substituting x equals three. So I've got y equals x squared minus two. So I've got y equals three squared minus two. So y equals nine minus two. So y equals seven. That's different to minus 10. So the answer then is no. Substituting in the next one. So here we've got substituting minus four. And again, you wanna be really careful with negative numbers. I would always recommend putting negative numbers in brackets take away two so minus four squared that's minus four times minus four so negative times a negative is a positive so four squared is 16 so it's going to be 16 minus two which gives me a y value of 14 as you can see that is the same so if you see minus four 14 does lie on the curve of y equals x squared minus two now moving on to our last example so here we've got an even more complicated quadratic equation so again, looking at a, we're substituting x equals one. So again, very good practice to write down the equation that you're substituting into. Now this one's gonna be a lot of substitution. So I've got one squared plus five times one, take away one. So y equals one plus five, take away one, which gives me an answer of five. And again, as you can see, that's different to the y ordinate in the coordinate. So the answer here is no. Moving on to B, we're substituting x equals three. 
So here I've got y equals x squared plus 5x minus 1. So y equals 3 squared plus 5 times 3. Take away 1. So y equals 9 plus 15. Take away 1. So 9 plus 15 is 24. Take away 1 is 23. And as you can see, that's different to the y ordinate. So the answer there is no. Then moving on to C, again, we're dealing with negative numbers, so we just need to be extra careful with this. So I've got y equals x squared plus 5x minus 1. Now, for this, I would strongly recommend that you put brackets around the terms and just be careful when you're squaring negative numbers to remember that negative times the negative always gives you a positive value. So here we've got y equals, and it's going to be minus 4 squared plus 5 times minus 4, take away 1. Minus 4 squared is 16. 5 times minus 4 is minus 20. Take away 1, in which we get minus 4. Take away 1, which is minus 5. What's happened there? And so as you can see, minus 5 is the same as the y ordinate in the coordinate given. So the answer there is yes. And hopefully that makes sense on now how to check whether coordinates lie on a line or curve.